There are now four months until GCC exam season 2026. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down what you should be doing to optimise these last few months to get the best results possible. If you're new here, my name is Henry Brandt. I achieved all nines in my GCCs, A star, A star, A in my A-levels, and I'm now a student at the University of Warwick. I'm currently back from university, back in my old room. Uh, you, you may have seen this whiteboard before, but it feels good to be back. Hopefully I've got some videos coming up soon on university, on what I'm up to, because I'd love to share it with all of you guys. So the, the big thing that I want to basically emphasize in this video is that it was this time during my GCCs, December to January, where I started my GCC revision properly. OK, so you may know if you know some of my backstory, I didn't really revise at all in year 10. Uh, I didn't really revise September, October in year 11. I failed chemistry mock. I got a three in my chemistry mock in I think it was November. And I basically started revising from December to January. That's when I really started to put in heavy, heavy effort. Now, you may have been revising for longer than this. You may have put more effort in in year 10 and the rest of school than me. But what I'd like to convey to the students who are aiming for high grades is I'd recommend you start your revision now, right? This month is time to really start to get into revision. In my five month video, I kind of emphasize you should be starting thinking about it. You should be testing things out. You should be reflecting on your mocks. Well, now's the time to really be putting systems in process and gearing up towards pretty good revision. And in this video, I'm going to be breaking down and talking in more detail about each of those. But make sure you know this for me to get all nines, this is when my revision properly started. OK, so the first thing that I want to go through then is content and flashcards. So this was the bulk of my revision at this time. OK, I was working through content and I was creating flashcards for most of my subjects. So from chemistry to go from a three in November to an eight, I got an eight in my January mocks. Basically, all I did was I went through all of the Seneca and a lot of it started coming back to me really, really fast. It's a great feeling when you start doing that. But I always recommend Seneca or, or any website that works for you. For example, uh, Medley AI is good. Brilliant's good. There's also different methods that, that work for you. But I like Seneca for teaching me the GCSE content. It is my best recommendation for specific GCSE spec fo focused content. Uh, Medley AI is kind of more questions. And then Brilliant is more like building your thinking and at a kind of deeper level. So that's what I'd recommend. But find some way that works for you to go through content and make sure, obviously, you, you probably know this by now, but make sure it isn't just reading from a textbook, highlighting from a textbook. You've got to find some organized way or app or method cognito of going through content. And then I was writing flashcards. OK, so you basically want to spend kind of months four and three counting down just creating loads of flashcards. So I really was doing kind of almost a topic a day. I was getting through loads. I was spending hours, maybe like 40 minutes a day flashcarding, like on average, just writing flashcards. You know, when you're writing them, that is revision. I don't think enough students appreciate that. But like as I was writing, I was thinking about how I could structure the flashcard for me and what helps me. And that is revision. It's important to appreciate that. If you don't know, you know much about flashcards, they're super effective at learning. I've done a video on flashcards and that I'll link in the description, so make sure to watch that. But at this time in my revision, the bulk of what I was doing was learning content and then flashcarding content. And that's really important to build those revision resources, build the kind of content understanding before you completely go all out on exam, topic papers, questions and all of that. But what I was doing also on top of that bulk, which was content, I'd probably say 70 percent was content. So on top of that, I was still doing, you know, exam practice. But my practice at this point wasn't really like full on papers yet. I was mainly doing topic papers and individual questions for the essay based subjects. So what I'd kind of do is say I went through chemistry topic one on Seneca on a Monday, maybe in a week's time or two weeks time, I would use my planner and I've done a video on these. I recommend these a lot. I basically would write in there to do a topic paper on chemistry topic one. So the reason I like topic papers in science is they're quite targeted and, you know, it'd be like quite short, shorter than a full on exam paper, but it questioned, you know, after two weeks time, do I understand the content? Some students make the mistake of kind of, they do the Seneca for a topic or they learn, go through content on a topic. So chemistry topic one, and then straight after that, they do the paper. I wouldn't do that. 
space it out. See if you, what you've learned, does it stick in your memory? That way you're going to be repeating it. You're going to be spaced repetition and that's really effective. So make a note of what you're doing. Keep an eye on your progress. But topic papers are very effective, especially for science. And then I was doing practice questions. I always recommend this for subjects like English language, English literature. Just sit down, write an essay. You know, if you're struggling on content for literature, for example, you can learn that beforehand and then write an essay. But this doesn't take too long. Probably two to three hours a week I spent writing questions. And I usually did that all on a Sunday. I would do an English language question, a history questions, uh, some history questions and some geography questions. And I'd hand them in, I'd get them marked, I'd work on the feedback and I'd repeat. I often talk about this when I'm teaching students, when I'm tutoring students. This is kind of like the cog that's right at the base of your vision. It's just going on constantly. Every week you're doing practice questions, you're handing them in, you're getting feedback, you repeat. That's a separate process. And on top of that, you're learning content. You're going through all sorts, all of that sort of stuff as well. So that's what my vision looked like. It's a really important reminder, though, but you need to be consistent. Consistency is going to do a lot right now. It's very easy to jump into 2026 and think, oh, I'm going to turn into, you know, the most crazy A-star student. And you just kind of lose motivation after a while. I don't want you to watch this video and like burn really strong for a week and then give up and then struggle for motivation. I would rather you did less, more. That's really important. It's that consistency. It's that turning up day after day after day. There are many days left now. It's much more than you actually think. Four months may not sound like much, or it may sound like a lot, but that's a lot of time to really learn everything. So trust consistency, trust the process. Often I find students are like, why am I not improving? You know, how can I not do this? And my main answer is just, you just need time. It does take time to improve in subjects. But with four months left, and kind of a month of exams. So let's say five months until some exams. If you went up a grade a month, so say you're at a four in maths and you went up a grade a month, you could get a nine. So it doesn't need to be crazy progress. You know, I did see that in some of my subjects. You may find that. But trust the process, trust consistency. Finally, you need some sort of organization, some sort of system for your revision. This is very personal. What I recommend and what I used was a planner. I was planning my revision. I also had an like a spreadsheet thing on Excel that really helped me, but I was making sure I was very, very on top. What subjects did I need to revise more of? I often talk about how revision is focused on your weak areas. So I was very, very organized at doing that. You know, every Sunday I was planning the week roughly. I was flexible, but you've got to have some sort of system. It can't be random revision here and there. You've got to be consistent. You know, every day I was also doing maths questions, all that sort of stuff. So I hope you find that video helpful and please comment any questions that you have. But basically to summarize, I started a vision now. Uh, you should be going through content and starting to create some sort of resources, flashcards. You should be thinking about systems, you know, focus around organization and systems. What's working for you? Are you covering all bases? And you should be doing targeted practice. I'm going to be there next month, going to be here next month with month three, the three month countdown into your GCs, and then obviously two, one, and give you loads of support throughout your exam. So if you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it. if you could subscribe, leave a like and ask me any questions, anything you want a video on, and I'll be happy to do that. Thanks for watching.